Fellow auto detailers, welcome to the show that features interviews with today's most successful auto detailers. This is the Auto Detailing Podcast. Here's your host, Jimbo Balaam. All right, what's up, everyone, and welcome to this episode. As you can tell by the name of this episode, we're obviously going to be talking about something that's been talking talked a lot about in the news. But in this episode, I want to talk about detailers specifically. What can we be doing? How can we combat this? What tools can we use Excuse me, use to combat this? Man, really? Wait till I start recording to get all burpy, huh? Because I think as detailers, we actually have some really cool tools to be able to combat this, help people, and really help ourselves in the same time. And that's kind of what it's all about. If we could help others and help ourselves at the same time, that is a huge win for everyone. So before I get into this, I have no idea what the long-term effects of a pandemic that it's being called uh, will have on this. Uh, Quite possibly and most likely, there's someone listening to this that has been affected by this coronavirus in some way. So I want to make sure that I'm sensitive to that. And I don't obviously know everyone who's listening or their history or story or or whatever. I personally don't have anyone that's been tragically affected by this virus, but um, I, I wanna be vigilant and sensitive to the fact that there may be someone listening to this that has been. And so <clears throat> with that, I, I just want to kind of blanket this whole podcast and saying, if you have been tragically uh, tragically uh, affected by this pandemic, I'm sorry. And, and if you have been uh, and there's anything I can do, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I, again, if I could help more people and I can help people, that helps me and that makes me feel good, all that good stuff. However, I think there's a couple cool tools um, and if we can look at history in hindsight, and I feel very fortunate that the last time something really bad happened um, in our world, being the 2008, 2009, or 2007 through 2009 financial crisis, was exactly the time that I started my detailing business. So I feel like this is... Um, pretty crazy. I think we all knew that something was coming. We didn't think it was going to be like this, uh, but the effects of this virus is what we're starting to see, similar to back in 2008. So we've had a pretty good run. However, let's start out with what detailers should be doing. You as a detailer, it, it's it, and I'm going to go off on a tangent immediately, but what I want to say is it's really ironic to me that the things that we should be doing and the best thing to stop the spread of the virus is general hygiene. General hygiene helps a lot, right? But we know as detailers, even more so than the normal public, that the general public, pretty much every person is disgusting. (laughs) And we know that because we see the inside of their car. Makes you wonder what their house looks like. Anyway, people sneeze, they burp, they fart, they eat, and they do all kinds of crazy things in a car. And then they call you the detailer and want you to clean up all those nasty things that you know they did in their car, but you don't know what they did in their car. You know what I mean? It's like one of the questions on an intake form for a detail now should be like, what happened in this thing? how you mitigate that is when's the last time have you had this detailed? And then you can kind of gauge how nasty it's going to be, right? However, since we don't know as detailers what happens in these cars, it's a great idea to wear uh, personal proper protection, right? At the bare minimum, gloves. And uh, we talk a lot about this with chemicals and dealing with chemicals, you should... um, Uh, because dealing with chemicals for so long, you should wear gloves. But how about just being inside a stranger's car that you don't know and you don't know what they did and chances are pretty high that they sneezed on their steering wheel and now you're touching it to move their car. So gloves at the bare minimum, definitely something that I have not been good with in the past. I've, I will applaud myself for a second. I've gotten a lot better with wearing gloves in, uh, recent times. And, uh, 
and even more so now. So I'm definitely wearing gloves even before I enter into the person's car. Uh, where it was funny, I visited someone today and we went for a fist bump. Uh, I just decided to shake his hand, keep it old school. <clears throat> anyway, uh, but wear gloves when you're detailing someone's car. For one, people are gross. The inside of their car is disgusting. You're touching that and then you're gonna pick your nose, right? And so, um, if you're like me, <clears throat> and so gloves are a great idea. Start with gloves. If you wanna wear eyewear and a face mask and all that, probably a really good idea, especially now, a very good idea. When you're applying a coating, a very good idea to wear a face mask. Do I wear a face mask when I'm applying a coating? Usually not, right? And I used to not even wear gloves, which I do not recommend. Not smart. I wear gloves now. Um, but again, proper protection to keep yourself safe and sanitary. Now, do you need to wear a uh, suit and you know zip it up in a, ha- a hazmat suit and all this crazy stuff? Well, no, unless you're doing hazmat cleanup. And if you're doing hazmat cleanup, you should probably wear a hazmat suit. <laughs> you get the idea, right? However, I think there's a couple things that we can do as detailers to really help people combat this uh, th- this fear and how we can capitalize on it too because what is happening is everyone's getting scared and they're panicking and this is what we saw with the housing crisis in 2008. Everyone starts panicking, they get fearful and they just start buying toilet paper, right? Which is weird, but whatever. Like, why are you buying toilet paper? Like, I, to- I was telling my wife this morning, I'm like, you're buying toilet paper, but worst case scenario, you could just get the hose out and clean your butt out. You know what I mean? So, uh, or take a shower. I guess you don't have to use the hose. But anyway, not the end of the world that we're not going to have toilet paper. I think we've survived for a long time without toilet paper. Is it convenient and nice? And do I want to have it? Absolutely. But I'll just hop in the shower too. Anyway, so <clears throat> maybe TMI. I don't know. So. I think one of the best services that you could be targeting and marketing right now, running Facebook ads, Google ads, uh, doing videos on it. One of the reasons why I'm doing a podcast on it that I'm going to release today, because one of the best things that you could do is take advantage of the hysteria that is going on and then leverage your services as the solution. Because we can be the solution to a lot of people. Why? Because we have all-purpose cleaners that can work as sanitizers to uh, disinfect interiors, right? So maybe um, uh, maybe let's uh, start there, right? So maybe the car doesn't even – it's not even dirty, but it happens a lot when someone buys a used car and then they come to get it detailed. The car's already been detailed, but they have like that weird fear, like, I don't know, someone else has been in here before me. I just want to get it kind of disinfected and cleaned up before I start driving it, right? Because back to our original premise, people are gross. And when you buy a used car with 50,000 miles, my thought is that's a lot of farts in that seat and I want it clean before I start farting in that seat. You know what I mean? And so... um with that, you can use an all-purpose cleaner. You could be shampooing the interior. You could be, quote unquote, disinfecting the interior. Also, another huge thing, and I already booked one job for this this week, is if you have an ozone machine. Now, the majority of the time, this thing's going to get used for odor removal. However, if you do a little bit of research on ozone, it is O3, which is enriched oxygen, which oxidizes things. And if you're not running it for, I don't know, 48 hours, because you don't need to do that, you could just buy a higher output machine and run it for, let's say, an hour inside a car or an hour and a half, especially depending upon if you're doing uh, odor removal or just sanitation. Sanitation, you could probably run it for 30 minutes to 45 minutes, depending on the output of your machine. If you're doing something like an odor removal, it may be one to two hours with a high output ozone machine after you've cleared it out and cleaned it. However, ozone is a phenomenal way to naturally, without chemicals, disinfect and deodorize surfaces. So running an ozone machine inside a car for 30 minutes, that's a decent output of ozone, will kill all bacteria inside the car. So what if you created a drive-through or, or you created an ad 
for you know bring your car over and within an hour we're going to have it completely sanitized not cleaned i'm not vacuuming your car or you can do that if you choose to but if you want an express car sanitation service bring it by it's 50 bucks 75 bucks and what's great about ozone machines and ozone services is that you can multiply your services with machines not people right it's like having robots work for you, not humans. So you're only limited to how many machines you have and how often you could be running those machines. But that, I think, is a massive opportunity in this current climate we're at right now, doing some sort of express sanitation, uh, express, um, call it whatever you want, but running ads around that service. Shoot, even if you get 50 bucks, um, you could do two an hour with one machine, that's a hundred bucks an hour and you're sitting on YouTube or listening to a podcast just like this while your machine is making money for you. What a thought. All right. So with that, what else could we be doing? We can, if you are starting to slow down again, it's a great time to take advantage and work on the business side of your business. So following up with customers, if you have a database of customers, like I talk about a lot here and on the Detailer Inner Circle, you could promote this express service, this sanitation service, or I'm trying to think of another word, but I can't, this uh, this disinfectant service, this express disinfectant service, to your database of customers who, if you have a database of 100, maybe you can get five or 10 of them at 50 bucks a pop. That's 500 bucks. You could probably fit them all in one day because you're doing two an hour. You do 10, that's only five hours. You really didn't even do much labor. Bum, bum, bum. There you go. You got 500 bucks in your pocket, right? If I did my math right, which I probably didn't, but you probably have at least 500 bucks, right? That's how you could take, and it didn't cost you anything because you just sent a text message out to your whole list or an email or a slide dial or whatever. So it only took you five or 10 minutes to think about what do I want to say? Let me dial them up. Let me text them. Boom. You know, it could be something, let me give you an idea for that too. It could be something as, as simple as, um, and because it's a pandemic, everyone knows, so you're not talking about an obscure thing like ceramic coatings, but you're talking about a pandemic that they're aware of. So, hey, as you've probably seen, or as is obvious, COVID-19 or coronavirus has uh, been sweeping across the world. Um you know, we at Jimbo's Detailing have an incredible service uh, with an ozone machine, which kills 100% of any bacteria on any hard or soft surfaces. And it's a gas, not a spray. So it seeps underneath the seat through the fibers of the seat. This is going to be too long for a text, but it gives you a general idea. Um, and we are offering express disinfectant services. It takes 30 minutes and it's 50 bucks. Now, is 50 bucks in 30 minutes, is that enough? If you want to get the majority of people, I think that's probably a good start because 50 bucks is probably right at that part, right at that that line where it's like, eh, it might not really work. And I'm talking as the general consumer now. It might not really work, but it's only 50 bucks and it's only half hour. So it's not like my whole day. And we're seeing those images of people in hazmat suits spraying down buses and stuff on the news. So it's kind of like that. And so 50 bucks, half hour, maybe 75, maybe 100, depending on your market. Maybe it's an hour. Maybe you want to do an hour and a half. Maybe you want to keep the car for a half day so you could charge more. This is where your business and your practices come into play. I'm just saying, if you're looking for quick, a quick way to implement it today to take advantage of this COVID-19 coronavirus thing, this is how you could do it. Super important that you have a list. Super important that you have an easy way to reach your database, to reach your customers. That is why I team up with House Call Pro. And if you go to housecallpro.com slash ADP, they will show you a free demo of how you can how you can store your customer's information. And then on top of that, I have the detailer inner circle. So once you have the database of customers, you have ways, awesome ways, and like texting, like mass texting, like mass voicemails, like I just talked about, to actually tell people about your new services. And this is why when we go through the mundane and you know I'm pumping out these podcasts and YouTube videos and it seems to get kind of mundane and oh, Jimbo's talking about a list again. Oh, Jimbo's talking about you know House Call Pro again. Jimbo's talking about auto fiber again. Jimbo's talking about the detailer inner circle again. Jimbo's pumping something else again. (laughs) But they're 
they're really things that I implement in my business and that you really need to implement into your business to so that when things like this happen, which happened in the early 90s, happened in the late 80s, happened in the early 2000s after 9-11, happened in 2008 with the financial crash, is happening in 2020 with this COVID-19, is going to happen again and again and again and again every few years because we, let's be realistic, we can't just go up forever, right? That that wouldn't work. And so there always has to be a quote unquote correction. And so it's going to happen, right? And it's how prepared for those corrections can we be? And so I try to discuss on this podcast and other ways, things that we can do to protect us and our business and our livelihood and how we could take advantage of these down times to really accelerate our business. After all, that's what people like Warren Buffett have done, made their money during downturns in the economy by sweeping up businesses that were undervalued and undermarketed and then flipped, held onto them and flipped them later or held onto them and turned the whole company around. You can research Warren Buffett on your own. However, I just wanted to jump in, let this podcast get out there, give you some tips and ideas, not just in theory of like, oh, wow, this is maybe how you can deal with the virus. This is maybe what you can do, but actually boots on the ground, practical information, practical services that you can implement into your business today. So I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Let me know what you thought over on YouTube. You could go to autodetailingpodcast.com slash YouTube. And that'll redirect you over to my YouTube page. Kind of a couple of videos that are just hitting hard right now. That's awesome. But reach out to me. You could DM me, of course, on Instagram or Facebook. Love interacting with you guys. And I will catch you on the next episode.